So today we're going to be having a look at um, extending Moodle using Collaborate and specifically we're going to be having a look at um, working with um, the Moodle Collaborate integration. Um, Lindsay won't be joining me today, I've reused these slides from um, a previous session. Uh, most of you may have um, seen uh, posts from me or um, things uh, from me in the past. I uh, have joined NetSpot about a year ago and um, I've worked um, with technology and education for quite a long time, a lot of the time in the vet sector, but I did a lot of work with the Australian Flexible Learning Framework, so you may have seen my name around. I've actually just come back from um, the Netherlands, hence that lovely um, photo that I've put up there, and I went to a Collaborate boot camp, so I have lots of really exciting things to um, tell you about um, Collaborate, and um, I'm sure that this will lead to some other sessions because there's some fabulous um, stuff that uh, you know, I wasn't aware of, so hopefully we'll have some future sessions where we can talk about those things. I'd also like to um, just uh, let you know of some new um, NetSpot team members. So from the consulting team which I work in, we've got um, Thomas Lassick has just recently joined us. And um, a lot of you might know Thomas from, um, uh, from Moodle HQ, his two minute noodles, and he also created the fabulous Mount Orange School um, Moodle demonstration site. So we're really pleased to have Thomas working with us. He'll be working with the consulting team part time. And our other new addition is Kahiwa, and Kahiwa um, is a, a client relationship manager, and she comes to us from um, Queensland, and she is um, an expert in Illuminate, so she'll be a fantastic resource um, going forward with um, Collaborate as well. So today's session, uh, we're really interested in having a look at the way that Moodle and Collaborate fit together and how the Collaborate product extends the functionality in Moodle. And I really want to spend most of the time using an application share to show you um, how the um, integration works rather than spending a lot of time using um, the slideshow. Um, but before we start, I'd like a little bit of input from you. What kinds of tools do you use in Moodle to um, generate collaboration between your participants? So feel free to write on the screen or to add in the text chat whatever you, uh, however you prefer to um, contribute. So uh, let us know what tools you currently use to collaborate in Moodle. Fantastic. So some really broad usage and um, using the standard tools as well as plugins. So um, that is uh, really good. Um, the screenshots on the screen obviously just show you um, an example of a chat, which um, the Moodle chat is quite uh, simple, and um, the forums, which are extensively used for a whole range of, of tools. So it's fantastic that you're using um, all of those other tools as well. And a new one for me to have a look at, I haven't um, heard of Uzu before, so I must get to have a look at that one. Uh, Carol, the, um, we'll have a look at that. So the um, Blackboard Collaborate session, um, you have to set up the integration to get that into your list of activities. And um, we'll have a quick look at that when we go into um, actually doing the application sharing. So I guess the thing is, um, what is what is missing between um, your uh, Moodle uh, classrooms and your real face-to-face -face classrooms and a lot of the time it's that real-time collaboration, the virtual um, interaction, uh, things like interactive whiteboard 
But there's so much more. Um, the Collaborate um, product is only one product that you could use to provide these tools. So um, people mentioned in the classroom, um, there's other tools like uh, Big Blue Button with IQ. They're all very similar um, products. Um, we are supporting um, the product uh, Blackboard Collaborate and I'm so happy to be doing that because I'm a Illuminate user from way back. So I'm really um, you know, over the moon to be able to offer Collaborate now to our clients. You may know that um, the product Blackboard Collaborate is actually a platform of products. It's not just um, a web conferencing tool. We will be we will be focusing on the web conferencing tool today, but um, it also includes an instant messaging tool and voice authoring, very similar to um, the Wimba uh, classroom suite. So um, for those of you who aren't aware, um, Blackboard Collaborate is actually born out of a, a combination of both Illuminate and Wimba tools and taking the best of both of those tools and making the Collaborate product. So we will be um, just looking at web conferencing today and I will say a word about mobile collaboration towards the end but um, you know, if you think about Collaborate as being an entire platform rather than just um, an individual tool. What um, specifically we'd like to look at today is the um, the integration between Moodle and Collaborate and the integration allows us to extend the functionality in Moodle. Um, you can see there's a whole range of, of a list of functionality there but um, let's have a look at it rather than um, having a look at any more slides. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, have a look at, um, oh, sorry, I'm going to application share. I'm going to show you a Moodle course and we'll run through some of the um, setup and also show you how um, the integration looks. And um, then we'll come back and, and have a little bit of a look at a couple more slides. So I'm just going to um, click on application share and I'm going to uh, share with you my browser. I'm just reorganising my window so that um, I can still see the text chat. And if you can just let me know if you can see my, so I have currently showing a Moodle course and it's a Masters in Business um, Administration, a Human Resource Management course. So yeah, just give me the smiley face or thank you. Um, putting it in the uh, text is fantastic. If you currently have your audio and video um, on the left hand side of the screen uh, so that you can see people's faces and people's videos and you're finding that the application sharing is a bit slow, you can minimise that window. So just to the left of audio and video there's a little down arrow and if you click on that it'll hide that um, information and it does make the application sharing a little bit quicker. So um, what we have here is a fairly standard Moodle course. It's just got one of the standard themes applied, and we've got the um, the section part one: strategy, vision, context, and workforce planning. And as part of that, the um, the teacher or the um, instructional designer has set up a tutorial session, which is a Blackboard Collaborate session. So you can see the little um, purple icon, um, which represents the Collaborate session. Um, when we click on that session, my login timed out. I'll just log in again. Um, you can see I'm a teacher in this session and the interface is, is very um, simple. It gives us a couple of options um, as a teacher to um, edit who can moderate the session, upload a file, join the session, check our systems um, set up or um, actually provides us with a guest link that we can share with others who are not necessarily part of this Moodle course. Once this is all set up, and we will go back to the start shortly, um, once this is all set up, when you join the session, the um, integration recognises whether you're a moderator, or a teacher in the course, or whether you're a participant in the course. And as such, you will automatically be a participant or a moderator in the Collaborate session. So um, that's 
really good and makes use of, of your Moodle um, settings. If I go back to the home page for the course, and I'm going to turn editing on and show you how you create a session. So turn editing on. And as we saw in the previous session, uh, sorry, as we saw in the slides, um, the Blackboard Collaborate session um, is listed as an activity. So if I click on Blackboard Collaborate session, it has the standard um, effect of taking us to the settings for that particular activity. So nothing different from our normal um, kind of Moodle workflow. You can see that there's a range of um, content that you can add, title and description are the only mandatory fields and then we've got a range of um, options including when we want our session to start and end, um, whether we want a recording to start automatically, how many um, talkers we're going to allow. Some of the settings are set up in the background, uh, so in the initial plug-in setup. So things like the boundary time are part of the um, Blackboard Collaborate plugin setup, so that's why that's greyed out. And you'll also see that there are a range of standard Moodle settings, including um, the conditional activities um, settings. So, um, say we're going to um, use this Blackboard Collaborate session as a um, session for uh, getting to know each other. So, this will be our introduction session. Oh. And um, with the session times, you can choose to make this an, a single session, so you might just have it running for an hour as it is now, or you could make it a session that was an open session for the entire length of the um, course. So I might say um, this course is going to be completed at the end of August, so I'm going to choose um, the end of August as the end date. So that way this room will remain open for that whole time and it will allow um, for drop-ins or informal sessions. So if you're chatting to um, a participant, you know, through uh, some other means, uh, uh, say Blackboard uh, instant messaging, for example, you'd be able to say, okay, let's get together in a, a session and uh, use this room for that session. You can also have the uh, session graded, but in this case, we're going to have um, we're going to leave it not graded because it's just an introduction session. But I've been playing with lately setting up some um, custom scales which allow you to then select whether the person attended, whether they um, participated, whether they um, viewed the recording following the session or if they didn't attend. So there is that, that information goes into the gradebook automatically or you can grade them manually. I'm just going to click on save and return to course. Fantastic. So Andrew's saying that he has, uh, they've enabled Collaborate for all students 24 7 in their program, which is fantastic. Um, the difference between the title and the session name is where it's used. So the title is used um, on the Moodle course and the session name is actually used within the um, Collaborate session. So it can be the same text. Ah uh, yes, if you leave the session open for the whole semester, there's only one grade. Um, you can record sessions separately though, so um, let me just go into that um, session. Um, you will see that, um, sorry we haven't got any recordings, but um, below uh, the guest link, the session recordings are listed individually with the date and the time. Um, so you can have separate recorded sessions, but if you do leave the session open, it's only graded once. So that would be 
um, you can use the logs to kind of manage that. So you could um, go into your logs and filter based on this session title and see um, which students participated when and whether they watched the recording or whether they attended live. Um, but you can only have one grade for this room. So um, the other thing that I just quickly wanted to show you was um, in the um, administration section. So um, the actual integration needs to be installed like any Moodle uh, plugin. And the information that you need about the um, server URL adapter name, all of those kinds of things come from your Collaborate license. So unfortunately at this stage um, the uh, integration between Moodle and Collaborate is only available for um, enterprise licences but we are looking into um, if there's going to be a variation to that. So if you have an enterprise Collaborate licence you will have this information provided to you and once the plugin is installed it's just a matter of um, adding that information. You can see that there are other um, settings here uh, typical to a lot of um, plugins. We've got uh, the you know things like the boundary time, which I have um, set at 15 minutes. You can also choose to pre-populate the um, moderators, have people raise their hands on entry, those kinds of things. So that's quite a, a familiar interface for plugins if, if you've had anything to do with plugins. Um, yes, Carol, unfortunately the virtual offices aren't um, supported but um, it doesn't mean to say that they won't be supported, it's just they're not currently supported and um, there is a move to only have enterprise licences so um, that might be something to uh, look into in the future. Back in the course, if I just go back to the, uh, back to the course homepage, I'm just going to log in, uh, sorry, switch my role to a student so that you can see what the student interface looks like. So um, obviously it looks like any other activity in um, Moodle and once we enter that activity we see a similar interface to what we saw as a teacher um, and you can see that um, there are limited options. So we do have um, join the session which would allow us to join the session as a um, participant or we can verify our, our system setup. So pretty much that's everything to do with the integration. Once you get into um, Collaborate there's a whole lot of other options that you can um, use and we're going to pop back into Collaborate shortly and have a look at some of those. So again I'm just going to go back to the home page of this course and um, yes it is fantastically simple and very much in line with our workflow that we use for other activities in Moodle. So we're not having to use a new process. So um, the setup link goes to the wrong page. Okay, that's good feedback Andrew, thank you. Um, it should go directly to the test page. Um, indeed the list clicks that um, we can provide our end users the better. So before I um, go on, are there any questions so far? Hi Rhonda, um, yes the sessions can be set up so that students can do presentations. You can actually set the session so that everyone is a moderator when they enter the room or the teacher can assign moderator privileges to people in turn. So the way that I've managed that previously is um, you know, lined people up so that they know what order they're going in and then provided moderator access to a particular student, allowed them to present, then um, allow moderator access to the next student. You can have as many um, moderators as you like, but if you leave everyone as moderators you do sometimes get um, a bit of interference. In
Based off the number of students that can see that you can see via video, you can have as many videos on as you like. It does slow down the performance, and particularly when you're application sharing, you'll find that the um, screen refreshes really slowly, and it starts to degrade some of the um, audio and the um, video. Um, in terms of groups, yes, groups. If you've got groups set up in your um, Moodle course, you can assign a session to a particular group, and you can use the same group functions that you can use with other Moodle activities. So um, you can support as many groups as you have in your Moodle course, and you can um, have as many rooms as you like. So because the integration is supported by the enterprise version of Collaborate, and if you've got the enterprise version, you can have as many rooms as you like, um, there's no restriction on as much uh, how, many, um, how many groups or how many rooms you have in a particular course. So do the session plans automatically populate, maybe, an upcoming event? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure what you mean. Um, are you uh, referring to the collaborate um, the collaborate plan? I'll let you talk. Thanks, Kim. Sorry, yes, I was trying to uh, type too quickly, obviously. What I'm seeing on your screen is that the upcoming events are showing, and one of them is the introduction session that you just produced. And I don't know if I didn't watch you carefully enough, but um, I'm assuming that came up automatically once you created that Blackboard Collaborate session. Is that correct? Um, yes, it did. So it was added um, the same way that you add any activity, and when you go back to the when you go back to the course, it's automatically listed there, and you can move it around and use all of the um, all of the tools that you would normally use to position that content. Um, that does um, bring me to another point, though. Um, you'll see that uh, when I'm just returning to my normal role. And we'll have a look inside that session set up again. So I'll turn editing on and click on update. So um, for those of you that have been Illuminate users in the past, you may know that um, along with the tool, there are two uh, little applications that you can download for free which support the use of the tool. One is Publish and one is Plan. So what Publish allows you to do is to take your um, Collaborate recordings and publish them in a format that you can use in other um, online areas. So for example, you could publish um, yes. your uh, recording as an MP4 and, and upload it to um, another space, YouTube, whatever you wanted to upload it to. The other tool that um, I just wanted to quickly talk about is Plan. Sorry, I should have just gone to um, the actual, I should have just clicked on it rather than editing. So with um, each room, you can click on um, add a preload file. So I've just created this file and, and um, so I've just created this session. And when you um, preload a file, you'll see that the types of files are quite restricted. So we've got the, the different um, extensions listed there. So one of the types of files that you can um, use are your um, any whiteboard file. So you can upload your PowerPoint and then you can convert it to a whiteboard file and you can use that to be preloaded. But in addition to that, the plan um, application allows you to create a lesson plan, which is more than just a lesson plan. And I hope to do a webinar on plan specifically later on in the year. Um, Plan allows you to not only upload multiple files, but also multimedia and a whole range of other content that you can actually um, you know, work with um, inside of your um, Collaborate session. They're all automatically loaded, the timings and everything are um, you know, provided, and it's an absolutely fantastic tool. So that's something to look forward to um, in the future. Okay. 
So um, I'll just see what I can do about that. It won't be a sec. Okay, so hopefully that'll be um, a bit better. Um, so we've got a couple of questions. So publish really needs to be built in. Yes, I agree. That would be fantastic if um, both publish and plan were built in and you didn't have to download them separately. Um, Eric, uh, let me see. In Noodle, uh, the Blackboard Collaborate plugin settings, I saw we need to search on web services username. So um, that is actually uh, to your uh, to your SAS administrator, and you'll be provided with that information from Blackboard Collaborate. So um, I'm not sure at what level that user is, but I believe it's a high level user, possibly the administrator. Um, let me see. Okay, excellent. So, um, if any, if I've missed anyone's questions, please do um, yell out so that um, I come back to them. And um, we'll move back into our collaborate session now. But there's um, no reason why we can't pop back into this session if you've got more questions about the integration or if you'd like to see something else. So I'm just going to stop the app sharing and get back into the. So a couple of things that we didn't see in the um, live session were the recordings. I'm just, I mean, it's fairly straightforward, um, and you can see that we have got there the um, two sessions that were in this particular advanced grading tutorial, um, and the um, user can play either of those recordings or view both of them. Um, just a very quick screenshot of the logs. I'm sure you will know what logs look like, but um, just to show that when we, uh, you can filter based on the activity, and in this case it was filtered based on that previous room. And you can see that um, one of our participants viewed um, the recording, and one of our participants actually um, attended the um, meeting. Um, and in the grades, the grades appear in a similar way that any other um, any other tool would appear in the um, grader report that has grades. Um, Natalie, you can certainly um, move through the recording, fast forward, pause, all of those types of things. I'm not sure what you mean by scrub. Um, if you're thinking about editing, you can certainly publish the recording and then use um, editing tools to, to edit that, um, that particular uh, recording. Mm. I haven't come across that issue, Andrew, but um, yeah, I'm happy to follow that up. Oh yes, you can certainly drag the position back and forth to be able to, um, you know, re-listen to a particular part of um, a recording, etc. So um, you may know that um, Blackboard Collaborate 12 has just been released recently, and um, there's a range of, of improvements um, that you might have even seen while we've been working through um, the session and having a look at um, the different tools within Collaborate. Um, we've also so one of the things that's um, improved is a more flexible closed caption window, and um, it allows you to. Um, show, you know, the uh, sorry. So you can see the closed captioning. You can move it around, and it, it's a lot more flexible than it uh, was before. There's echo cancellation, which was released last Monday. So uh, you get uh, a lot more flexibility. Whereas previously, 
um, you may have found that if people weren't using a headset that you've got a lot of echo, so that's a lot better. And that's um, preceding the mobile collaboration which allows us to um, use the product on um, both smartphones and um, tablets. And the mobile collaboration is not yet released but we do, uh, we do expect it by mid-August, so it's quite going to be quite quick. So Andrew, the way that you can tell what version you're on is to go into your administration interface. And um, I might just um, pop back into our application sharing and show you the administration interface for Collaborate just very quickly. Um, so that's kind of a bit of a, a missing picture from what we've seen in the um, Moodle uh, section and, and then what we um, can see the integration between the two. But there's another whole interface which is um, used for the administration of your rules. So again, I'm just going to pop into application sharing. Okay, so can people now see my um, collaborate window. So it's got a purple kind of a header and some uh, menu options, resources, etc. So if you can just indicate whether you can see that or not. Excellent. So a lot of the um, a lot of the administration that you do with your um, with your um, Collaborate settings are done through this um, Collaborate administration, which is pretty much the same as the Illuminate administration. So if you were using Illuminate previously, you'll see you'll be very familiar with this. Um, it's quite a detailed interface and it's not the most intuitive. So um, we're hoping that um, in the next version and the next couple of versions that we'll see improvements to this. But um, there's a whole range of, of things that you can do here. Um, if you were not using the Moodle integration, which you don't need to use this to create rooms if you are using um, the Moodle integration because that's done through the integration. But if you're wanting to create a room um, outside of your Moodle integration, you can come into this um, interface and um, create a room by choosing schedule and meeting. You can also um, use this for managing your particular session. So uh, you can go to utilities and you can look at all of the sessions that you have. Um, sorry, my login, I must have been locked out. Um, you can go to utilities and you can actually have a look at all of the Moodles that, uh, sorry, all of the Collaborate rooms that you've created. Ah. Now I've just uh, remembered something uh, belatedly that um, it does sometimes take a while to load and in fact when you're doing application sharing sometimes this window won't load so um, yeah, we, we might not see this window, I might need to do another session later on to show you those and admin interfaces. So Andrew's um, saying uh, who can see the recordings? So. Uh, anyone who is uh, in the Moodle course can see the recordings, participants and teachers. Um, admins in Moodle of course will be able to see them by going to the activity. And then admins within the Collaborate um, SAS, uh, this interface here, will be able to see them. Um, so that, that's actually not going to load, uh, sorry, but um, through the utilities you can tell, uh, you can actually decide which rooms, uh, which version. Um, if you have got an enterprise license, I would imagine that you would be upgraded automatically, um, but you might need to check that. Um, even at a manager level within the Blackboard Collaborate admin interface, you can change each individual rule room. But if you want to change all of your rooms, you need 
need to be at the administration level in the Blackboard Collaborate um, administration interface. So, um, yeah. I'm not sure if I've answered your question, Andrew, so I'll just um, let go of the mic and uh, let you talk. I actually think you have, but I was just trying to figure out whether the administrators at a university or another site uh, with a site-wide license could, what they could see. So I assume, I think you've mentioned that they can see the recordings and I presume they can see who's set up Blackboard collaboration sessions within their Moodle classes. That had just become important for analytics, but it could also be useful for us because at the moment we're just tossing around who's really doing the support, whether it's done internally within our university or whether it's handled totally through NetSpot. Yep, definitely. So you can um, you can use the um, interface for oh, sorry, the admins can see um, that information, and the logs are available at a course and site level. Um, so you'd be able to you know pull out some raw data, um, or if you need to do things um, in a more complex way, you could pull the pull the data out of the middle database and then manipulate it in a, a reporting tool. So um, yes, definitely that that's all included. Okay, so I'm going to pop back into um, Blackboard Collaborate again. So I'm just going to close the um, application sharing. Go back to my whiteboard. Um, and so we're just talking about the, um, the new features in um, Blackboard um, Collaborate uh, 12 and the, the mobile um, is coming soon and I hope to be able to present something on the mobile for you um, soon after it's um, been released. So um, look for that session as well. Um, the other uh, Things that I'd like to cover with you is once you're um, in a Collaborate session, you have a lot of options uh, to work with your um, users. So we have the option of um, going into uh, breakout rooms, which is something that facilitates um, group work. And that can be done automatically or it can be done as um, self-selecting. Moderator can also set a, um, a time for uh, the breakout and people are brought back automatically at the end of that time. Other things that you'll have noticed from the interface, um, we talked before about profiles. So you can build a real feeling of community using the profiles on the um, in the um, participants list. So you can go in there and set up your own profiles. You can also use the um, whiteboard for a whole range of um, working together. So for example, I could load a new blank page and we could work on that new page together, um, adding text or other content to um, build some type of collaborative experience. So excellent. Thank you, whoever's doing some drawing. Um, the other thing that's fantastic with um, Collaborate is that you can have whiteboards which are interactive so you can load content which people can then manipulate. And I'm just going to um, load a page but feel free to continue um, playing while I do that or ask questions. So hopefully you'll see that um, I've just loaded a picture of a tree with some roots and some text over on the right hand side. One of the things that um, I really like to do is to create these kind of interactive um, tools that people can then um, contribute to or work with. So you could add your own text. Um, this slide is um, typically about um, what happens in the background and what happens up front. And it, it brings up a lot of discussions about um, you know, how people are working with their learning management system or other technology and how that works in with the student's experience. So you should be able to take the pieces of text over on the right hand side and drag them to where you think they should go, whether there's something that happens um, in the background, underneath. <laughs> 
and um, behind the behind the scenes, or whether it's something that's a student facing tool. So um, Collaborate is a fantastic um, tool for providing like different ways of interacting. As I said before, you can also add your own suggestions, so you're not just stuck with the text that the teachers provided. You can use their text tool on the uh, whiteboard tools to actually click and add your own um, suggestions. <coughs> Does anyone have an example of how they might have used an interactive whiteboard in an Illuminate session? I know we have some very experienced um, Illuminate or virtual classroom users in the room. So perhaps some stories. <laughs> I like out of control. Go, Carol. Hi, Kim. Thank you. Uh, yes, only recently we used the whiteboard in a Toastmasters uh, session in the Blackboard Collaborate. We're breaking new ground there. We're wanting to use Blackboard Collaborate for training sessions for Toastmasters and we were planning how best to do that so we had our uh, members write directly onto the whiteboard and of course we were able to print that and uh, I'm actually looking at the sheet that we printed off the other day and uh, we can work from that for our action plan. So a really useful tool. Yeah, it's, that's fantastic. It's a really good example of um, it's not just a tool for uh, necessarily teaching and learning. It can be used to support a whole range of um, admin functions as well. So not just for presenting content to learners, but um, supporting professional groups um, used for, uh, you know, particularly with um, organisations that are dispersed. You might have um, even a, a HR group that meets in an uh, illuminate or collaborate room that they can, um, you know, actually work with and, uh, you know, meet regularly but not have all the travel costs um, associated with, um, you know, meeting together face to face. Um, so we've um, left this room very open, but um, it's also um, useful to note that if you wanted to, you could restrict access to the whiteboard, um, to the text chat, to the so you can actually restrict what people can select. If you know that you're going to have a lot of people on and you think that video might be an issue, you could restrict the video. So you can control all of those things if you really want to. Um, one more thing that I'd really like to show you very quickly is that you can also load um, rich media which um, is quite nice um, if you do have someone who's um, creating um, content that's, um, you know, perhaps multimedia content, um, you can upload that and play it from um, within Collaborate. Um, I'm just looking where I've put that in a, a very safe place. So um, I could have preloaded this, uh, but I didn't. While we're waiting for that to load, any questions? Okay, can students provide the rich media? So if um, if you wanted to make the students a moderator, they can load content the same as the moderator can, or they could provide it um, in a different way, and then you um, you know make it available and. Uh, Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, that's the perfect way of doing it. The other way of preloading content is to do it um, using a plan. So you could actually have um, things loaded and then um, they'll just play automatically as they come up in your lesson plan or your, your collaborate plan. Okay, so that's loaded and I'm just going to load it. I think this one might be a little loud, so you might want to just have your uh, mouse pointer over near your speaker volume, um, just in case. I can't remember if it's this one or the other one. 
<laughs> okay, so um, I've just stopped that. Some of you have said that you uh, weren't able to hear the sound. I'm not sure um, why that was. Um, it may have been that you're on a slow connection, and I did get a warning message that some um, participants hadn't completely hadn't received the complete download, but um, it should. Um, that, that was my fault. I really should have. That's a, that's a good lesson in good preparation. I should have actually um, uploaded that either as part of a plan or um, individually when we were preparing for the session. So preloading your um, content um, is a really good move, particularly for multimedia content. Um, Collaborate does quite a good job of managing the um, of managing the, uh, oh, I've just lost the whole word, of managing the bandwidth. So um, each person is connecting to the server based on the connection that they've got available to them. So you're not affected by other users' um, bandwidth. So if someone's uh, working on a mobile device, they'll obviously uh, or possibly have less bandwidth than someone that's working on a wide system within um, their own organisation. Okay, so let me close that. And back to Sorry about that. <laughs> We've um we're back to your beautiful artwork and um, that's pretty much all of the content that I need to cover. Um, if we've got any questions, I'm happy to um, cover those now. We've had a look at how the integration works between um, Moodle and Collaborate and we've had a look at um, the, uh, some of the features of Collaborate but we've really just scratched the surface. I hope that you've seen that it's a really nice integration and that it's familiar to our normal Moodle workflow and that the tools within the virtual classroom are quite rich and easy to use. So Carol's got a question, I'll uh, pass the mic over. Thank you Kim. Um, I don't want to hog the um, session but I'm really keen to get publish and plan but I only have a virtual office in my name. Is that still free for me as well? And how do I do that? Um, Publish and Plan are uh, applets and I believe they work with the virtual office. So um, you just need to go to the Blackboard Collaborate um, website and, and um, perhaps um, Andrea or Thomas or Kahiwa, if you could search for the link for us and paste it into the text um, chat, that would be much appreciated. Um, yeah, so they're, they're applets, you download them from um, the Collaborate site and um, I, I haven't used them with Virtual Office but I don't see any reason why you wouldn't because um, Virtual Office allows you to upload, upload the same um, file types that you can from um, Fantastic, thanks Kahiwa. Um, the virtual office allows you to upload the same file types as the full product and also the um, publish is just taking your recording. So you have your recording, you're just converting that recording. Andrew, you had a question? Yeah, I, um, I have got a question. Um, we're, we have a lot of problems with audio and in the previous product we were using, it used a phone bridge. We've been looking at one particular phone bridge which is called Chorus Call and what that does is it allows you to put in some settings as you set up a session 
and then you can um, basically allow students to dial into the session instead of using VoIP because the biggest problem I've had with, with VoIP is the, the problems with setups of headsets and all those other sorts of things. I'm wondering if you know, of, um, or if you would know roughly how many people are using um, phone bridges. I know it does cost because you have to pay for the phone calls, but for our program it's very important. Or if there's any other phone bridges, because we've looked at one called Chorus Call, which seems reasonably cheap, but maybe there's something else. Um, no, you're right on the money, Andrew. Um, we've done some investigations um, with using soft phones and a whole range of things, but that's very limited to um, what your provider's providing. Um, I know that some of the people at Blackboard have got, um, are using Intercall, but that's also uh, quite an expensive option. Um, I do know that on the roadmap they are looking at improving the um, phone bridge um, functionality. Um, I don't know what that's going to include, but um, it sounds like you're on the right track and as far as I know there's no uh, cheaper option or um, there's not anything that I would recommend specifically. Um, but it's something that's on the radar, so we'll certainly you know, publish stories if we hear news about that. Excellent. Any more questions? Well, thank you everyone for attending and um, I guess the, the biggest thing about collaboration is um, increasing engagement, uh, focusing on your uh, participants and having flexible options and moving together with Blackboard Collaborate allows you to do that. We do have a survey for this session so I'm just going to um, put the link into the text chat and if you have got a few seconds, it's not a very long survey, it would be really great to get some feedback about the session. and. Um, Yes, thank you all very much and do feel free to um, contact us and if you've got any um, further questions or any feedback, we'd love to hear that. I'll finish the um, formal session with a, a big thank you and um, if any of you know me, you know that you can't have a presentation by me without a picture of my dog Dougal. And, um, but I'll, I'll stop the recording and if anyone's got any last minute questions before we finish off, please feel free and thanks again for joining. <laughs>